Alright, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. For any of you that are new here, my name is Pedro. I am a former Amazon Software Engineering intern and soon to be full-time Amazon Software Engineer. So one of my earliest videos on this channel was actually me reviewing the resume that got me into Amazon over the summer. Uh, but since then, I've actually gone through the internship at Amazon. I've added it onto my resume, moved some stuff around, added in some new skills. So I thought it'd be a really cool idea to go over an updated version of that video, essentially going over my new resume. So if you guys are interested in that, please stay tuned. But before we get into that, I want to say thank you very much to everyone that has subscribed because I recently actually hit 100 subscribers. So thank you very much to everyone who's been watching the videos, liking the videos, leaving comments, and subscribing. I really appreciate it. And I'm very happy that you would make me a part of your YouTube life. So without further ado, let's jump into the video and take a look at my new and improved updated resume. All right, my friends. So as you can see, I definitely let the Amazon internship go to my head because I transitioned from a Google Doc to a very sexy latex template. And you know, what's the point of having an internship at a top tech company if you're not gonna start writing your documents in latex for no apparent reason? I mean, I think it just comes with the territory. Uh, but beside the point, yeah. I decided to use LaTeX instead for my new resume, and I also got rid of a couple things. So I got rid of the email and my GitHub. I moved the tech skills down and made them more specific. Uh, I also removed all my school experience items since I had a more relevant work experience now, so wanted to highlight that instead. I added my Amazon internship because, you know, gotta milk it for the views, for the money. It's just the way it goes. Um, I also changed the project in my project section since before I actually had this like lyric analyzer um, Which I never really finished and so I decided to put a project that I actually finished which was my monthly spending automation tool And I'll talk about that later, you know, let's not worry too much about that right now But yeah, and I also moved my education all the way to the bottom because you know You work at a fan company once and really your education just Plummets so you know doesn't matter that much anymore. So put it at the bottom all right, but let's go over the main parts. So the first thing I want to talk about was why I removed my email and my GitHub. And so both of these were kind of influenced by me talking to my friend who is actually an intern at Amazon, but in the recruiting uh, section, department, whatever it's called. And she actually told me that most of the recruiting is done through LinkedIn. And so I didn't really expect to get any emails from recruiters nor did I expect them to look at my GitHub, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second, but most of the recruiting is done on LinkedIn, so I thought I may as well just direct them to my LinkedIn, which is already beefed up and looks a lot better than, and has a lot more information than my resume. And yeah, they're gonna look at that, and if they like what they see on my LinkedIn, they're more likely to reach out through a LinkedIn message, since they're already doing most of the recruiting through LinkedIn anyways, so it's just one less thing to check on their behalf. So I decided to scrap the email in favor of highlighting my LinkedIn more. And now kind of the same thing with my GitHub is that recruiters aren't technical. My friend took like one computer science class, so she, got, she knew about coding, but like whether or not she would be able to tell if my code was like super good or not, if it was like well designed, she's probably not gonna be able to do that. So, you know, GitHub to a certain extent only really matters to kind of Verify that you do write code in Java, in Python, or in C++, but aside from that, they're not going to know if you write good code or bad code. So I personally went with scrapping it and just not putting it on my resume. It gave me space to put some other stuff, talk about my Amazon internship more. And yeah, I mean, just it didn't seem like it was going to help that much. So scrapped it made LinkedIn the priority. All right, but for the next section for work experience, so like I said, I got rid of a lot of the school experience stuff that I had talked about in my previous resume. Um, and I did this because I wanted to make space for my software engineering internship at Amazon. And I had a lot to say about that. And my school related stuff, well, yes, kind of impressive, like coming in first place in a couple competitions, really isn't as relevant nor as important to recruiters at tech companies as previous experience uh, as an intern at a fang company, so I went with that instead. And so, you know, I just wanted to highlight a lot of stuff that I did, um, throw in as many key words as I could. So I talked about Java 8 functional programming, since that's what we mainly use. I learned about splitterators, which is a very technical thing. I talked about Java Spring, which is definitely going to pop up in a lot of different uh, job descriptions. So, you know, that's something important to put on there as well. 
REST API, efficient, scalable. Yeah, and then it talked about like that I did this all for my Amazon free time application, which is was which was the application that my team worked on. Um, I also wanted to talk about like using Unix and Linux, writing JUnit tests, the testing framework that I use, CI, CD, integration, development, pipelines. I thought all this stuff was important as well as Agile, Scrum, Kanban, all these things that were more team oriented and organizing based that I wanted to highlight and make sure that whoever was looking at this could see that I did a lot of work during my internship and that it's all relevant and that I learned a lot of new technologies and that I could be a capable engineer and a capable addition to their team. And then the next thing that I had in my work experience was what I had before, which was my only other internship, which was at, in this case, Monterey Financial, just a small finance company uh, near where I live. All this is basically just to show that I did some work with Python and SQL and that the benefit that came out of it was that I was able to help their call centers re better reach their goals and track their goals. So yeah, relevant work experience. It was very, very good of me to put a lot more information on here. And now, projects. I moved this up a bit more since I thought this project was actually a pretty good one and I actually finished it. So my monthly spending automation tool, I ended up actually using Python and using the stuff that I learned from my previous internship uh, at Monterey Financial. Um, I used like pandas in order to read my bank statements and I could organize them by category, calculate the totals that I spent in each of those categories and essentially have a, a program that could automate what I was doing by hand and use the Google Drive API to actually transfer that into a Google Sheet so that I never have to be sitting on a calculator on my phone and just switching between my uh, banking app. And uh, I can just do that using a program to track my expenses every month. And I thought this was a really cool uh, project that I did and it helped me out a ton and it's something that I could really talk about. If you saw my video on my Amazon internship interview tips, you'll notice that one of the tips that I gave was making a project that is based on automation and something that you can talk about because there's a clear problem that you can solve and then you can talk about the process of you going about solving that. And so this was one of them and I thought it gave me a very good opportunity to to talk about and showcase my problem solving skills. Now the next thing that I had was my technical skills. This used to be all the way at the top since I didn't have much relevant work experience. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that I could just kind of talk about the stuff that I learned at school and the stuff that I taught myself. And so I kind of made it a bit more specific since I'd actually worked with with a lot more stuff. So I kind of split it up into this whole primary languages, uh, Java, Python, C++, just the main ones that I code at uh, for fun myself and at school. Uh, I did a little bit of web development. I learned a little bit of HTML, CSS, JavaScript. I started learning React JS a little bit. Didn't get too far with it, but you know, I could mess around with it and I could read the documentation if I needed to, uh, to build anything else. So it's definitely something that I've worked with and I'm familiar with. So I put it on there. I also had Java Spring, which was I was a lot more familiar with because of my Amazon internship. So I dropped that in there as well. Uh, databases, I worked with MySQL from my previous internship and then MongoDB uh, was from a personal project when I was trying to learn some web development. And then taste testing frameworks, again, from my Amazon software engineering internship, uh, we use JUnit and Mockito to mock out data. And so this was stuff that I didn't have previously since I had only ever been given uh, pre-written tests. I never actually had to like set up my environment to run tests or build tests myself, especially when it came to like REST APIs and mocking data. So I thought that would be important to put on there to highlight that this was a new skill that I had acquired. Uh, version control, most people put stuff like this Git GitHub. I also put source tree, which was this kind of Git flow visualizer that I ended up using in my internship. So I just wanted to make sure to have that on there as well, since this was a new tool that I used and you know, maybe a company uses it and they're like, oh, this guy knows how to use it already. Um, maybe it'll be a plus for them. Uh, methodologies and tools. This was just, I needed a way to get Agile, Scrum, Kanban, and Jira on there. So I kind of made that up myself. But essentially this just highlights that I have, I have experience working in an Agile team with a Scrum master, using Kanban boards, and using Jira to handle tickets. And now finally, the education section. The least important of all these sections, but at the bottom it goes. California State University San Marcos, that is the uh, state university that I go to, go Cougars. Bachelors of Science in Computer Science, I'm doing computer science. GPA, 3.7, not the best, but I mean, once you get a job at a FANG company, do you really care what your GPA is? Not really, so here we are. Miracosta Community College, Go Spartans. That is the community college that I went to. 4.0 GPA. You could tell that I was trying hard at that time. Gotta, gotta get that 4.0. Make it, make yourself look good for those transfer applications. Uh, but yeah, so I put my education at the bottom. Like I said, not super important after you get 
a FANG internship or a FANG job, at that point, your work experience matters a lot more. So I wanted to highlight that instead, and I just dropped education to the bottom. All right, so that's it for the video today. If you enjoyed taking a look at my new and improved sexy looking latex resume, then make sure to smash the like button and subscribe. If you are interested in any other Amazon related in information, such as my internship experience, uh, some of the mistakes I made during my internship, interview tips, then feel free to check out the Amazon playlist on my channel. I'll probably have a card for it probably up here if I point in the right direction. Um, yeah, that'll, ha that'll have a couple videos that I've made about Amazon that could be helpful for you. So if you're interested in checking out a video on my monthly spending automation tool, leave a comment down below and uh, let me know if you'd like to see a video like that because I'd love to get into documenting some of the projects that I'm working on. So if that's something that interests you, you wanna see how to build some sort of automation tool to help you yourself, help someone else, then uh, yeah, leave it, in, leave it as a comment down below. But yeah, I'll see you guys next week for the next video. See ya.